Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how to use the fundamental principles of counting. This is counting techniques under statistics and probability. Let's look at example number one. If you buy two pairs of pants, four shirts, and two pairs of shoes, how many new outfits consisting of a new pant, one shirt, and one pair of shoes would you have? So I'll be presenting listing method, tree diagram, and the fundamental counting principle. Let's start with the listing method. So for listing method, I'm going to use some abbreviations. So for a pair of pants, I'll be using P sub 1 and P sub 2. For the shirts, I'll be using S sub 1 up to S sub 4. And for the two pairs of shoes, I'll be using SH1 and SH2. So to list this, you can actually make your own combination. Say, for example, P sub 1 paired to shirt number 1 and then paired to shoes number 1. So that would be P sub 1, S sub 1, and SH1. Another combination, you, also, you still start with P sub 1, then you pair it with shirt number 1, and then you pair it with shoes number 2. So that would be P sub 1, SH1, and SH2. So if you list all the possible combinations without any repetition of the above listed combinations, you'll end up with 16 new outfits consisting of a new pair of pants, one shirt, and one pair of shoes. This is the listing method. Now this can also be solved using three diagram and it should look like this. There you go. So this is your starting point. It actually branches out into two options. For your first action, you need to choose which pants to use. And then your second action, you need to choose which of these four shirts would you choose. That's why if you have chosen the first pan, it branches to four. You need to choose which of these shirts would you use. And then on each shirt, it branches out to two. You need to choose which one of these two shoes or two pair of shoes should you use. So that if I list it properly, this branch here, going to this branch up to shoes number two is pants one, shirt one, and shoes number one. If I choose this branch, first action, I choose pants number two, and then second action, I choose, sh say, shirt number two, and then third action, I choose shoes number two, so I have the combination P sub two, S sub two, SH two. So in total, you still have 16 new outfits consisting of a new pair of pants, one shirt, and one pair of shoes. And the last method would be the fundamental counting principles. Now the way the fundamental counting principles, there are three actions here, basically. So your first action is to choose which pair of pants would you use. So there are two options for you. The second action is to choose which shirt would you use. So you have four options. And then the third action is to choose which pair of shoes would you use. So there are two. Multiplying these three actions with each number of options. So you have two times four times two. You'll end up with... 16. Even if you rearrange which action should come first, say for example, your first action is to choose which shirt to use. So you have four options. Second action is which pair of shoes would you use? So there are two choices. And your third action is which pants for you to use? You have two options. So getting the product of all these options, you still end up with 16. So there are total 16 new outfits. This is the fundamental counting principles. By definition, fundamental counting principle, suppose there are n sub 1 ways for an event or action to occur, n sub 2 ways for the second to occur independently of the first, and n sub 3 ways for the third event or action to occur independently of the first two, then the total number of ways for the three events or action to occur in succession is the product of n sub 1, n sub 2, and 
and sub 3. This principle can be extended to any number of events or actions that occur in succession independently of each other. So let's look at example number two. A plate number is made up of two consonants followed by three non-zero digits followed by a vowel. How many plate numbers are possible if the letters and digits can be repeated in the same plate number? So we'll be using the fundamental counting principle and uh, notice we have six actions here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first two actions you need to choose which consonants should be used. So take note that you have 21 consonants from the English alphabet. The next action after the first two actions, so we have action number three, four, and five, is to choose which non-zero digits would you use. And finally, the last action is for you to choose which vowels to use. So let's start. The first action and the second action you have an option to choose from 21 letters, which are consonants in the English alphabet. And action number three, four, and five, talking about non-zero digit, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you have nine options for action number three, number four, and number five. For action number six, you'll have five options, the vowels A, E, I, O, and U. Take the product of all these numbers and you end up with 1,607,445 plate numbers. Let's go to example number three. How many three-digit combinations are there in a three-dial combination padlock? So this is how it looks like. You dial this to get the right combination for this padlock to unlock. So it's three digit combination. Let's use the fundamental counting principles. There will be three actions here. So let's uh, place some three dash there. And in the first action, you have zero to nine digit. So there are 10 options for you. The second action, you still have the same number of digits, zero to nine. So you still have 10. And the third action, you still have 10 because there are still 10 digits, 0 to 9. So take the product of these three numbers, you end up with 10 cube or 1,000. So there are 1,000 possible combinations that the digits 0 to 9 can be arranged in two to form a three-digit code. So this is the answer for example number three. Let's move on to example number four. How many four-digit combination are there in a four-digit push-button combination padlock? Solution, fundamental counting principles. Since it's a four-digit push-button combination, we end up with four actions. But notice that if you press one of the button, it can no longer be repeated. So meaning the options here cannot be repeated. So for the first action, you have eight numbers to choose from one to eight so there are eight the second action there are only seven left because once one button is pressed you end up with seven buttons left for the third action you end up with six button remaining so that's six options for you and for the fourth action you end up with five buttons remaining because you already press three buttons from the first, second, and third action. So that's eight times six times seven times five, and you end up with 1,680. So there are 1,680 possible combinations that the digits one to eight can be arranged into to form a four digit push button code. Finally, we have example number five. How many three digit even number? can be formed with the digits 2, 4, 5, 3, and 7 with no repetitions allowed. So it should be an even number, three digit. So meaning I should always end up with 2 and 4. This is quite hard. So before I use the fundamental counting principle, uh, I think it 
would be better if I organize it using the tree diagram. So let me start with a tree diagram. Let me start with branching out to 2 and 4. So I have 2 and 4. So if I choose 2, I could end up with uh, branching out with 5, 3, and 7. So this would be 3 branches. This is 3, 5, 7, so that the last digit should be 4 there. So this is a 3-digit combination. It's an even number. Now if I branch out to 4, I should also have 3 branches for 3, 5, 7, and my last digit should be 2. So this is 2, 2, 2. So this is a possible combination using the tree diagram. So my first action, I have 2 multiplied to my second action. I have 3 choices, so that's 3. And my last action, I have 1 option left. So that's one possibility. Another possibility, uh, let me start with 3, 5, and 7. So branch out to 3, 1, 2, and 3. I have 3, 5, and 7. Now if I have 3, I might end up with 2 followed by a 4. This could also branch out to 4 and I end up with 2. This is also a possible combination. So 3, 4, 2. Okay, so this should branch out to 2. That is 4 and 2. That is 2 and 4. And if this is 2, this should be 4. If this is 4, this should be 2. So another possible combination, 5, 2, 4, or 5, 4, 2. Still, 3-digit even number. And then this one should be uh, 7, 2, and 4, 7, 4, and 2. So I have my first action is 3. Multiplied to my second action is 2. And then my third action is 1. So that's another possible combination, three-digit even number. And another possible combination for this, let me still branch out to three from starting point. I have three, five, and seven. And then if I have three, I could end up with five and seven. And from five and seven, this should branch out to two and four. So another possible combination, 3, 5, 2, or 3, 5, 4. And this is 3, 7, 2, 3, 7, 4. So it branches out to 2. So this should be 2 as well. So from 5, this becomes 3 and 7. Then this is branching out to 2 and 4. 2 and 4. So that 5, 3, 2, and 5, 3, 4. 572 and 574. All right, my last branch I have 3 and 5 branch out 2, 2 and 4. This also branch out to 2, 2 and 4. So my first action I have 3 multiplied to my second action I have 2, and my third action I have two options. There you go. So I get the sum of this. So I have 2 times 3 times 1 is 6 plus 3 times 2 times 1 is also 6 plus 3 times 2 times 2 this is 12. The total should be 24. All right. So going back to the question, how many three-digit even number can be formed with the digits 2, 4, 5, 3, and 7 with no repetitions? 2 and 4. Help me out with this one. If you think that my solution is incomplete, please comment down below. Thanks for watching.